What we're going to do today is show you how to use, take samples of quantitative benthic macroinvertebrates. When we talk about benthic macroinvertebrates, we're talking about invertebrates that are on the bed of the stream, the riverbed. And so the sorts of devices that we want to use to sample those benthic macroinvertebrates, I've got some examples of um, here. And these are called server samples. And you can see that these servers, there's a number of different size classes depending on what sort of samples we want to take. So the other thing is when I talk about macroinvertebrates, I'm talking about invertebrates that are greater than half a millimetre in size. Now to collect those, we're going to use uh, devices which have a mesh on them and the size of the mesh will determine what size benthic invertebrates we collect. So for example the one I've got here which is quite a large server sampler has a 0.5 millimetre size mesh. In other words it's going to collect what we would call macro invertebrates. We do however have some server samples that are finer mesh so this particular one here has got a very fine mesh. It's down at 0.25 of a millimetre, or 250 microns. So we can collect quite smaller invertebrates with this size of mesh. The important thing about these devices is that they're used to take quantitative data. In other words, we want to use this to collect information about, say, the density of invertebrates that we find in a stream, or the biomass, or perhaps the productivity. If we wanted to do different types of studies, maybe to collect the diversity or total number of species, we'd use different types of devices. So the, the server sampler is, um, can be of different sizes. This particular one here is a typical size for a server sampler. It's 30 centimetres by 30 centimetres square. And what we're going to do is sample the bed of the stream inside this square area 30 centimetres by 30 centimetres. This happens to be 0 0.09 of a metre squared. So if we want to work out the density of animals, we know that we're sampling a, a known set area of the substrate. As you can see here, this one's a somewhat smaller server sampler. This is actually 25 centimetres by 25 centimetres, and we have some even smaller ones there. Because we want to collect density data, this also means that we have to collect multiple samples. We have to replicate our samples. So normally we would take a minimum of three server samples at a site, possibly up to as many as five. The aim here is to try and collect quantitative information on the densities of benthic invertebrates that are in these streams. Now when we look at a stream, we can see that there are different velocities, different depths, and different substrate size. So here on the side of the stream, we've got slower water, we've got moderate sized cobbles, and the stream's not very deep. Benthic invertebrate densities are liable to change as we move from the shallower, uh, slower flowing water out into the deeper, faster water. Usually when we're collecting density data, when we're using quantitative information, these server samples. We often want to collect in the middle of the stream. We want to collect in the faster water, either in riffles, we call riffles, or, or runs. Quite often, benthic invertebrates might be larger in larger substrate. So if we found a, a boulder out in the middle of the stream in the fast water, often we might target that as one place that we take one of our server samples because it's liable to have more animals and larger sort of animals in the faster water. One of the other things that we need to think about here is that as you're going to be collecting multiple samples, it's best to work from downstream to upstream. So start off in the bottom of your reach that you've identified, decide where you're going to take your three server samplers up the reach, and then work from the bottom to the, up, from, to the upper reach so that you're not walking over areas that you've already disturbed. So I've selected this area here under this larger stone as, as the first place I'm going to take a server sampler. 
The, um, the thing about this is that you're going to sample inside this rectangular or square area here. And you place it over the substrate you're going to sample and try and lay it fairly firmly down on the stream bed. The net of the Serba sampler is heading downstream and below here is a pothole that my insects and invertebrates are going to flow into as I take my sample. So what we're emphasizing here is sampling inside this particular quadrat area. I generally quite like to use my hand for doing this. The idea is to, to disturb the substrate to, and to turn over any rocks and boulders that you've got. And you can see that there's invertebrates on the underside of our boulder here. Give it a good wipe and all of these will then get washed into our net. So the idea is to disturb the area inside the quadrant pretty thoroughly down to a depth of about five to seven centimeters. So I'm going to just disturb it. Some people uh, use a stick. Um, if you're in an urban stream or an area where there might be bottles or, or metal or something, then obviously you want to be pretty careful when you're using your hand. But uh, in a stream like this, it's fine me just using my hand to disturb this area. And you can see that everything is getting flushed uh, into the net here. We've finished collecting our sample. Now we want to transfer what's in the net and the pottle uh, into our sample to take back to the laboratory. So we can pull the net out of the water and you need to give it a little bit of a rinse because some of the invertebrates will actually be stuck uh, on the mesh on the inside of, of the, the net. So usually you need to, to flush it a little bit. The idea is that we're trying to wash most of our invertebrates down into our collection jar down the bottom here. Once you've done that, then we can take our sample back to the bank and then uh, put it in our collection jar which we're going to take back to our laboratory. I'm just going to unwind this one. This particular pothole, we've actually got a little bit of mesh here to let some water out. And what I've got here is a sample that I'm going to take back to the lab to process. So uh, we'll put this in some sort of container. I've got a plastic container here. And one of the things that's really important here is to make sure that you've labelled your samples. On the top of the lid of this container, I've labelled the site, this is the Ashley River, the date, you might put your name and that sort of thing. And inside, I've got a paper label as well. So this one's pre-printed, but uh, you might uh, use a piece of paper, write in pencil, and put again that site information, any other information you need, date and, and time and that sort of thing. And so now we can just transfer our sample into the pothole here. And if we're going to take this back to the laboratory to process, we might add ethanol at the stage. You might add 100% ethanol and pour that into the sample to preserve the animals. If you're going to process them within a couple of hours, then you might want to leave them alive, not put any ethyl in, in there. But if it's likely that you're going to take more than uh, half a day or so to actually get round to processing these samples, then you want to preserve them, put ethanol in there. And that'll keep the animals in, in pretty good condition um, for when you come and look at them under a microscope. So although the Serba sampler here is very useful for taking quantitative samples, it does have some disadvantages. So you can see to start off with, we have to sample inside this quadrat, this known area. And depending on the type of stream you've got, you might have very large substrates, such as this boulder here. And you can see that in fact, I can't actually fit the server sampler around this particular boulder. So when you've got very large substrate, that makes it very difficult to take a server sampler. Similarly, with a device like this, if you try and sample in very fast water, then you might have difficulty actually holding the server in place for you to take your sample. If the water is very deep, then that might be a problem as well. Again, because you may have to hold on to it with one hand and try and disturb the substrate with your other hand, deep, fast water makes it very, very difficult. The real advantage of it though is that we can use this to get pretty accurate quantitative data. 
One of the big advantages of the Cerber sampler is that we can take samples from very discrete habitats. So if I decided that I wanted to take a sample from a relatively small area of quite a uniform depth and velocity and substrate, then I can use the Cerber sampler to target that small piece of habitat. If you want to find out more information about how to take samples of benthic invertebrates, then there is a booklet here which describes a range of different protocols that you can use in different habitats. This book is available as a PDF on our Learn website and inside it lists some sort of recipe book type guides on how to take samples in different types of habitats and what some of the disadvantages and advantages of these techniques are. So there's these national protocols available for you to look at.